How to draw the Tampa Bay Bucks logo. Go Bucks! The materials that you're going to need today are paper, pencil, eraser, a black marquee, marquee? A black marquee or a sharpie and something to color with. As always, write your name and teacher's name on the back of your paper. Flip it like a pancake. Watch out. Now we're gonna start drawing the skull of the Tampa Bay Bucks logo. So I will be using Sharpie so that you can see it on camera. What will you be using? That's right, a pencil. Now we're gonna draw a curve line that goes up and down. That's gonna be the top of our skull. Now a bumpy line that goes down, that's gonna be the cheekbone. And another bumpy line on the other side. Next we're gonna do the mandible or the jaw. So it's a straight line down. It curves down to the chin. A straight line across. Straight line down, curves down to meet the bottom of the chin. So now we have the outline of our skull. And remember, if you ever need to pause the video, go ahead and pause it and then catch up. Now we're gonna do the eye socket. So it's kind of like a diagonal or slanted line that curves down and up. A diagonal line the other way, a line that goes down and up. Now we're gonna do the nose, which is kind of like an upside down U. And then where the teeth would go. So it goes diagonal, straight, diagonal, up. Now I'm just gonna follow that same line all the way across. And since I'm using Sharpie, I'm gonna color it in, but you don't have to do that if you're using pencil. One, two, three, four, five lines for the teeth. And now I'm gonna color in or shade in some of my dark areas, but I'm only doing that because I'm using Sharpie. So if you're not using Sharpie, you wouldn't have to do that right now unless you really wanted to. Now I'm gonna add some details like a line in between the eyes to make him look angry and a line on his forehead to also make him look a little scary. A line on his chin, a little line on the, or on the suture area, which is the skull, and by his mandible. So now he looks properly freaky. Next, we're gonna do the football that's underneath his face. So I'm gonna draw two dots, one and then two, and that's gonna help me keep my football in the right spot. I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see. And remember, your paper is not glued to your table, so I like to turn my paper, so I'm gonna connect the two lines with a curve, and then another curve line on the bottom. Now I'm gonna draw the four lines that go in between the football. So a slight line on the edges, and then we're gonna count one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Nice job. Next, we're going to work on the sword. So again, I'm going to draw a dot at the top. So there's my dot. I'm going to draw an imaginary line to the left and another dot. So I, now I know kind of where my sword tips are going to go. So I'm going to draw a line that goes from my dot all the way down to my football. And then another line all the way down to the other football. Now let's do the left side. So you're going to go draw a line from the point all the way down to the football. And then a line from your other point all the way down to your football. There's going to be a line in between our sword on the right and then a line in between the sword on the left. What do you think is coming next? Mmm, that's right, the handles. We need to hold on to our sword. So it's going to be a tiny bumpy line and I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see this a little bit better. A curved straight line. A circular shape. A line that goes down, across, and up. Now we're going to draw a line along the handle of the sword. And this is going to be the part that your hand holds on to. I'm going to color in that little part because I am using Sharpie, but if you're not using Sharpie, you don't have to do that. And now we need to do the right side. So it's a hook line, a straight line, a circular shape, a line that goes down from the football and across and then back up. And just like you did on the other side, you're going to make the, make the uh, area for the hand to go into the sword. And then color it in. Now we're going to do the area around our skull, which is going to be the flag. So I'm going to draw a dot right up top to show the top of my uh, flag and then all the way down to the bottom. So notice it's kind of at a diagonal, so it looks like it's an action or it's kind of waving. If you need to use a ruler to connect your lines, then you're welcome to, but I'm going to freehand it. So now I'm connecting those two lines together. And then it's gonna swoosh around, and so I'm gonna make another dot to show where it's gonna end. So I'm going to turn my paper because remember it's not glued to our table. It's going to go down and up and then come to a point like it's waving in the wind. Now the other side is going to follow that. So I'm going to make a dot at the bottom. Again, I'm going to turn my paper so I can properly draw it. And it's going to curve out, up, and down to a point. Now I'm going to do a sideways V shape because it looks like the flag is a little bit torn, right? Because a pirate flag is kind of rugged looking. A backward C shape. Another sideways V, another backwards C shape, and then a curvy line that comes down and meets at a point. Now we're going to do the bottom that looks like kind of like a sword, like what we did earlier. So it's a straight line that goes down from your flag. And then one more line, kind of like the number 11.
Now we're going to do a straight line across, a little hook, a loop down, and then our handle is going to curve around. I don't have that much space there at the bottom. I didn't plan very well, so I'm going to make my sword just a little bit smaller. Number 11 again. So there's one side of your 11, other side of your 11, and then a ball shape is going to go on the bottom. Ooh, barely got it in there. Nice work. Now we're going to trace all over our pencil lines with our Sharpie or dark colored marker. You could also use a black crayon or a colored pencil. And I'm going to make some of my lines thicker. So this is going to make my logo stand out a little bit more. And it's going to give it some weight. So the thicker your line is, the more weight it has. Remember your paper is not glued to the table, so feel free to turn your paper if it's easier. And maybe you have some mess up lines that you want to cover up. Make some of your lines more defined so it makes it look really nice and sharp. Last but not least, we're going to color our design. I would prefer to use marker, but all I had available to me was crayon, so use whatever you have available to you. And remember, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I outlined it with a little bit of gray, and then I did a red background. But maybe you'd like to do different colors. Maybe you'd like to cut it out. 